In case you missed the first season of Cooked, I took 35 of my friends on an epic 4,500 kilometer 30 day road trip through Southern Africa. Not only did it change our perception of life, it made us realize how good life really is. So if you're not climbing into your car and traveling out into the great outdoors, you're missing out on a whole whack of life. Lucky for you, I've got just the excuse. When I consider our history as a species, human beings have been nomadic scavenging beach bums and bush babies for far longer than we've lived in houses or had running water. If it squirted, squeaked or breathed, it invariably ended up being slapped on the coals and cooked in the great outdoors. And it's only in the last couple of hundred years or so that we've forgotten the knowledge that made us the most successful hunter-gatherers and gastronomic kings and queens on the planet. My name is Justin Benello and welcome to Cooked. This weekend we're driving up to Pringle Bay for a little bit of R&R. Quick little stop off at the Salt River Market for some fresh goodies. 85 kilometers out of Cape Town, I've got the most magnificent spot for everyone to come and spend a weekend with me. I'm gonna cook, you know the rest of the story, so yeah, just sit down in your couch and join us for the ride. Yeah. How are you doing, my bro? Mr. Bowman! <laughs> Good to see ya! Nice to be here. So we arrived in Pringle Bay, and this is where we get to spend our time for the weekend. And this is what makes it all worthwhile when you really think about it. You know, you work the nine to five, five days a week, 52 weeks of the year. The weekend is what you live for, and that's why we're out here. Hey, Kess! We virtually finished unpacking and then afterwards we uh, going fly fishing. <laughs> now fly fishing for mullet is quite interesting fishing because you never kind of know what's going to happen. Could catch bugger all and <laughs> could catch plenty. And now Justin is walking like he drives. So you like to keep your fist above your head. <laughs> to dominate well, my friend, I think you've been misled. Doing this. I just want to show you what um, the whole principle behind it. High tide, water washes up into the kelp, and there are little things that eat the kelp, which the harders eat, called sand fleas. Come have a look here. And it's not like trying to find an earthworm, there are quite a few of them. That is what harders eat. Apparently, they say that these, if you fry them, Tastes like uh, peanuts or those milli kernels. <laughs> I haven't tried it, but I don't think I will. And then, as a as a bonus plan, what I think we should do tonight is we should fry some up for Garrett. I think uh, yes. <laughs> we'll be frying them up for Garrett. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> This beautiful thing is going to turn into a beautiful little lunch. Gareth, did I just break its neck? It's the ugly part you don't want to watch. So we went fishing this morning. The grin on my face has me over the days without you. I stay out of trouble. And sometimes nature doesn't play ball. So we had to come up with a plan B and went to Global Ocean to get some abalone. 
So Dale, we've arrived in Claremont and we're going to Global Ocean in a couple of seconds to uh, get our palamon. The problem is you can't dive them out anymore because the poachers have raped the ocean and greed has taken over and all the rest of it. But you've got to understand that some people are really poor and they have no other alternative. Aquaculture offers that alternative. Right, basically the way that we do it is we bring large wild abalone from seas just like this, nice and rough. And we take them and we artificially spawn them in little tanks inside in the brood stock room. Um, what we do is we raise the pH to 9.1 and we get them to basically spawn in individual sexes, females in one tub and males in the other. And we mix just a tiny bit of the sperm with um, obviously a very large quantity of egg. And we then lay down 3 million eggs in each egg tray and they hatch overnight. And we then take them outside to settle in the assessment place where we get that diet and film ready for them. Right, basically in each one of these tanks we settle 2 million abalone larvae. If you look there's some tiny little white dots there, you can see those. Those are basically abalone that are now about two weeks old. And they've been on there for, you know, seven days in these tanks. These are abalone that are now about two to three months old. And you can see they're slightly bigger. That's a nice little four millimeter guy there. And a couple of his buddies just around him. Okay, this is the next stage of the abalone process. This is the weaning area. And what we do is we bring the abalone in off the plates and we put them onto artificial diets that we have slightly better control over their nutrition. These ones in here are now probably about three years old and they're getting to the size now where they're ready to eat. So yeah. these are lunch. Well, these are going to be lunch. They're the big enough ones. You did it so much better than I did. Well, you yeah. do the, we're <laughs> going to do lunch thing. Gareth, thank you very much. No worries. I guess this is really what it's about. This is weekends away. We get to come here with everyone. I cook lunch with the fish. Gareth didn't catch for a change. Luckily we got the palamon. So I think I really have to start off here and show you guys how to shuck palamon. The easiest way to explain it to you is that a palamon shell, better to show you on this one because this looks lazy, man, is that you have a deep side and a shallow side. On the shallow side, what you're going to do is like slide a knife in like that and cut the muscle off. And then you pull off the what they call this, the entrails, it's the guts. So you don't eat that. And then you uh, cut a V in the back where the balance of the entrails are, 45 degrees. And you get that ugly bit out. Now the only way to really explain it to you is that when you cut him off the shell, his muscle tenses up. So what we need to do is slice him into slices about five mils thick, and then we're gonna beat the living daylights out of it to tenderize that muscle. Thanks to Gareth and Boz, these little numbers have all been taken out of the shells for us now, and now the nasty part starts. And I'm going to do a couple of it, and then I'm going to delegate it to Gareth, because he's only caught fish that big. And I really feel sorry for the person who has to beat these things now, because they're not quite the size of the big ones that we used to get as kids. And all you've got to do is beat them to break that muscle. And you can see what happens is they go from this like hardly pliable thing to something that's easily pliable. Now, I'm not gonna do one of these because I got like nan bread and tzatziki and a whole lot of other things, a whole lot of other things to make as well. So I'm gonna get Gareth to do this. Gareth! Right, what do we need to do? One comment about size and I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> don't cut you know, I don't, I don't actually have to tell him anything, but no, you Don't know, cut it, just bash it. You want to bash the whole thing? They know everything, bro. When it comes to seafood, let them do it. We're doing it good, guys. I mean, you can do it. <laughs> right, Mr. Rodkin, you can hear the beating that's going on outside there. Mr. Beaumont is somewhere down there getting aggressive with our Parliament. While Gareth's doing that, I'm going to quickly make a tzatziki and the, the, the complicated part about this is that I have to quickly dice it up and salt it so that the excess liquid drains off before I add in the yogurt. So, I've got to peel these just to get the green off because you don't want that bitter taste in your tzatziki. And then all you really want to do is slice it down the middle and then roughly chop everything up. And then you throw a hell of a lot of salt on. What it's going to do is it's going to draw the liquid out of the cucumber so that when you add the yogurt a little bit later on, you don't have a yogurt that becomes really runny with the liquid that's in the cucumber. And you mix it up, and then you put it in the sink where all the excess liquid can drain off. 
which takes about 45 minutes. So while that's happening, I'm going to make you a naan bread. And that's like straightforward, 250 grams of self-raising flour. We'll try and hit like 250 grams of... <laughs> Two tablespoons of alive yogurt. Teaspoon of salt, roughly mixed in. Now all we need is um, lukewarm water, 115 mils. And a little bit at a time. Now, you can see what's happening here. It's almost the right consistency. Not too sticky though, you don't want it too sticky. And then all you do is leave it under a wet tea towel for sort of half an hour in a warm spot, let it rise, and then we're about ready to bake it up. Now, all you really have to do is take a sort of egg-sized ball of dough, okay? and roll it out. It kind of wants an oblong shape, so you're going to roll it out as thin as you can. Okay, now that's about as thin as I can get it out. And I just want to show you what happens when we put it in the pizza oven. Now if you don't have a pizza oven, you can always just chuck it under your grill. Okay, and this is the beauty about a pizza oven. Come take a squeeze first before I put it in. Now burning at the back is a whole lot of wood which makes this little baby inside supercharged. So you've got your scooper, Put him on there and push him down to the back. You want to come closer? And you just put him in there. And you wait like a minute to 45 seconds and then we'll turn him and then back in again. I can see how this is toasting up and if you break it apart like that, that is beautiful. Bread. Want to get someone else to do it? We're cooking man bread. What you see? How do you know how to make man bread? Because Justin told us. Justin told us exactly how to roll it out. This is a quality control check. We'll check how the guys. Where is it? This is where you go. Mm, that's that's delicious. delicious. Is it? Check it what they're doing. What? Not bad, eh? Oh. For the first time around. Newbies. Noobs. Stop bubbling and rising. I want some bubbles. They know how to do it all now. You know what I mean? Animals, aren't they? <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? Friends in their best element. Okay, Dale, so I think we're ready to do the next thing. Now, the beauty about doing palamon this way is it's really straightforward. All you need is some sort of crushed hard wheat thing. I'm using Provita. To give you an idea, what happens is these are the best breadcrumbs you can ever have. You just crush them quickly like that. And the beauty about the way of cooking the palamon this way is when you've chopped up your uh, palamon like that and you've beaten it and you've chopped it up and sliced it into those thin slices, you just drop it in and mix it around in the crushed provita. And what it's really doing, as you can see, it's like quite, you can see it's quite gooey and sticky and stuff like that. And its own juice allows these to be perfectly coated like that. The real trick about cooking palamon this way is it literally takes 10, 15 seconds a side. So when I put them into a pan in a couple of seconds and some hot butter, a dash of garlic. 15 seconds, turn, 15 seconds. And when you can slide the spatula through the palamon easily, it's done and you take it off the heat immediately. And you know that I'm gonna have a taste in about two seconds. I just wanna get them all out before they overcook. You know me, I love my food, huh? but do you know the real proof of the pudding is to let someone else taste it. Gareth, won't you come in? He's the fundi, you know, you met him. <laughs> Don't know hey, about Sam. that. That's damn good. Okay, now what we're going to do is finish the tzatziki off. Eat this with a naan bread, dip it in the, in the yogurt tzatziki, which is just going to mellow it all out and we're ready. Garth, why don't you come finish these off me quickly so I can make the kelp? Hello, young man. Hello. <laughs> in, in case you haven't got it, Garth's my sidekick. He has to do all the other stuff that I don't feel like doing. It's all good, it's all good. And he's doing terribly well right now. He's very nervous and he's thrown everything in and he's trying to stew it. 15 seconds aside, yeah, no, and then turn, sort of uh, just checking, and I'm going to go and get the rest done. Yeah. So, now what's happened with this, 45 minutes under salt, it's drained off and then been rinsed off so that you get rid of all the excess juice, and then pat it dry. 
cucumber. Dump it in a bowl. A little bit of yogurt and the little addition of some chopped garlic and a little bit of fresh mint. And then I think we're about ready to eat the first course as such. So now everyone's had a taste of what Perlamun's really about. And that's the delicate one. That's the one that your teeth crumble through and things. The next one's gonna be a little bit more chewy. I'm gonna need a lot more people to help me, but it's really straightforward. It's essentially Perlamun abalone baked in kelp. And by the way, this is kelp. And what we're gonna cook them in is this section over here. Taking some cube Perlamun. So we're gonna add some rice. This is pre-cooked basmati rice. It's a long grained rice. Par cooked, so it's virtually done and about the same quantity of rice to palamun, and that's fresh nutmeg. This is about a tablespoon or so, but you know me with quantities. Next step is some crushed black pepper. Again, I kind of battle with exact quantities, so that feels like about it's enough. Straight in. Then we need a little bit of butter, cube it up roughly. What I'm gonna do in a couple of seconds is mix it all up with my hands and squash everything together so that all those flavors are infused. Right? The eggs there to bind everything together. A little bit on the windy side. And then the last ingredient I have to add before I add cream and champagne is a little bit of crushed provita just to bind it all together. And we're probably about 45 minutes to half, 45 minutes to an hour away from eating. That with me, that could be anything up to two hours. And you've got to squash the butter so that it's impregnated. Isn't that a nice word? With the perlamun and the black pepper and the nutmeg and the chunky bits of abalone. These are mussels that have just been steamed in white wine, de-bearded, taken out of their shells, and then some yellowtail, which is a firm white fish, grilled on the fire and deboned. Once I finish mixing this up, we have to stuff it into the kelp tubes. And there's a small art to it, but not a lot. And this is a really unique way of a bit of lunch. Okay, I have to wash my hands. And then we're gonna stuff it. And I think I need a whole whack of like kitchen slaves for that. Kitchen slaves being friends who need to learn how to do this. So you're not. As Mr. Beaumont says quite aptly, Dale, the next part is about shoving something in. And what we have here is some kelp that I cut from the reefs this morning. And all you really want to do is end up with a section probably, well, the idea is, in fact, I have to show you because what happens when you cut kelp open inside is you see you've got that beautiful tube. You got that? Now what we do, Gareth, and I think you're probably primed for that, is well, stuff already. all of that full in. But first I want to do just a splash of cream. Hold that for a second, Mr. Beaumont. Right, and then a splash of champagne in. Now, all he's gonna do is shove it in there until it's jam-packed. And obviously we've got a whole whack of people to feed, so I've gotta make a number of these. I'm gonna go and grab a couple of friends, leave Beaumont to show them how to do it. We close it up, throw it on the open fire, on the coals, until the kelp starts blackening, and then it's about done. Take your, like, something that's gonna stop at the top side of it, and you push it in that side. See that? And what it does is when it cooks, it keeps it nice and airtight, so everything bakes beautifully in there. Oh, 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 jug him and oh, Quint, oh, I'm turning into your birthday. Why don't you come give us a hand, bro? Well, because, you know, later on, I'm going to make you a drink. You see, the messy parts, I don't like, dude. I a place and I. I feel the sun, it's beating down on my face and I I got nowhere to run, I got nowhere to hide and I I think I'll take shelter from the sun No more war Jog in me no more war Jog in me no more war Jog in me no more war 
All I can say is this wasn't me, but the last part of this is to throw this all on the fire. So you've got to come along with me. I'll come back and grab the rest of these in a moment. Let me give you an idea of what's going to happen. Okay, now that young Beaumont's put the grid on for me, I'll just uh, put everything underneath. They're all popping now, it's time to eat them almost. <laughs> I'm really excited about these and um, the Beaumont brothers who've been fishing since they were kids have never had stuff like this before. So uh, I get to give it to them for their first time as well. And the beauty about this now is that all you have to do is hold on to it. Afrikaans English for fantastic. <laughs> yes, it's good. I can get it. Super straight for the plate. No fork needed. <laughs> Now there's nothing better than at the end of a hard day of relaxing is to relax a little bit more. Hey John, hey just you. You know, those guys were out until half past three this morning and then up at half past six to go for another throw again. Maybe they have better luck today. It's sad, it's almost the end of the weekend, but not yet. We've got a quick little breakfast for everyone and then some time to mellow out. So, breakfast is really straightforward. So the first thing up is a little bit of butter and then we've got these beautiful little harder fillets from yesterday. We caught on the fly. It won't take very long, it's a, it's a very thin fillet and uh, it's quite an oily fish, so it's got beautiful flavour. The trick now is to break your egg in straight away so that it's ready about the same time. You see, the thing about television is you never get to smell. And it's just a matter of flipping the egg, and then we eat straight out of the pan. And I forgot to bring a fork. How are you going to eat it? <laughs> I'm going to eat it out of there. Oh, bugger it, you know? Revert to where I'm used to doing it. A little bit of egg in the harder. And that's it, breakfast. The rest of the day is our own. Relax. And that's that, eh? Look up at the stars. I wish that I could. You know, 15 mil of very powerful perm, sperm is going to do the job in that. <laughs> 15 millimeters of sperm. 15 milliliters of sperm. Start again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, calm down. Give him some because my fish was these big. <laughs> yeah. No, on that one. Yes. yes. Brother, <laughs> you just burned my whole face. <laughs> <laughs> I took it lovingly, but I mean, hello there. Give me more, just I'll just I'll just mime it because no, I have no taste buds. I wonder why the world and brothers have been doing this forever. <laughs> 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 ah! 
It's yummy. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs>